Crack IIT, crack IIM, crack UPSC, crack AIMS and you will be happy for the rest of your life. I'm pretty sure that you also must have been promised something like this. In fact, I often get asked, am I happy with my life after IIM? Are my batchmates happy? And if people from top colleges earn such decent salary, why are they always cribbing about life? I have been reading about this, researching about this and what I realized is this, we have not exactly been cheated by being promised happiness after we achieve something. It's just that it was a little misunderstood. Take this experiment for example. Two monkeys who were being given food in return of a simple activity of passing a rock to the human outside. Now the experiment starts and one of the monkey passes the rock to the human outside and gets a cucumber in return. It happily eats it for the first time. However, now the next monkey does the same thing, passes the rock to the human outside and gets grapes in return. Now when the first monkey gets cucumber again for doing the same thing, it throws it back to the human outside because it has all already seen the second monkey getting grapes for doing exactly the same thing and now it starts getting frustrated as well why should it get only cucumber when the other one is getting grapes for doing exactly the same task so cucumber was a perfectly fine reward the first time around and that is exactly how expectations work in our life so I read this, happiness is equal to results minus expectation and that brings me to the first point about happiness. So if you are thinking let me achieve this particular thing or let me reach over here and then the process of happiness will start, it's absolutely futile because as soon as you attain something the baseline of expectation also changes and that's why happiness is a relative concept but we mistake it to be an absolute one. And now whenever anyone asks me if I'm happy with my life after I am, my reply is definitely I'm relatively more happy than I would have been without the degree and I believe that's the best answer. So once you reach somewhere, especially when I reach the campus, the place that I've been dreaming for for the last two years, I realized the same hustle, the same cycle continued, everyone was scribbling about things that they were not doing enough, they were not achieving certain things and obviously at that point of time I mistook it to being stuck in a rat race and obviously that makes one uncomfortable that I'll never be able to be happy if I'm always stuck in such kind of a rat race but only later did I realize that it's not about being stuck in a rat race rather probably it's the chase that is making me more fulfilled and what I was mistaking to be happiness if I reach that state of mind if I reach that kind of a state probably I will get more uneasy. But does this mean you cannot lower your expectation and expect to be more happy? Of course you can be and it certainly will make you more happy. But the idea is that we are not living in an isolated world and to naturally lower your baseline of expectation requires a very mature and a very advanced state of mind. And probably at least I am still not there. I've been reading about it, researching about it still, how to naturally do it. Because it is not something I just tell from tomorrow, this will be my expectation and it happens. It has to instinctively come, it has to come from within, it has to naturally come to you and that's the difficult part of it. But the good thing for people like you and me is happiness is not absolute and obviously if you fail an examination you cannot expect anyone to be happy. If someone is preparing for an examination, the baseline of expectation is at least passing that examination. So if you fail, you cannot be happy. But how unhappy you would be after failing an examination? That is certainly something that you can control and that is what I've been reading about, researching about, trying to incorporate that in my mindset because that's the easier part of it. So let me share this with you, how to be less unhappy. The most important lesson I received here was that we are challenged in our vertical vision and what I mean by this is we tend to only look up in the ladder and we never really look down and this is absolutely so so true. We obviously have those people in our vision who are earning better than us, who are in a better position, who have probably got their dream college early but we never look for people who are probably still struggling to get their dream college, still not earning enough and one of the powerful videos that I had seen on this particular topic was when a guy riding a bicycle was looking up to someone who was riding a motorcycle, the motorcycle guy looking up to someone who was riding a car, the person in the car looking up to someone who was riding a bigger car and the cycle just continued. And the best advice that I can give you here is that I've also been implementing is go out and just volunteer for an NGO. See you certainly need to broaden your circle first that is you need to come out of your circle of only your batchmates or only your company's colleague and if you can volunteer for an NGO that's the best thing that can change your perspective when you realize about the privileges that you have, it will definitely change your perspective. Probably the NGO will not be able to pay you in money, but it will certainly return that with happiness. 
The next thing is around the negativity bias and here if I ask you to list down all the good things that have happened with you today and then to list all the bad things that have happened with you today, probably for all the bad things you will list it down pretty fast but for the good things you need to think a little bit and that's exactly the negativity bias. We focus a lot more on the bad outcomes, on the stress that we have and we focus less on the good things that have happened to us, on the success that we have achieved. And the best thing that you can do here is start journaling. Start journaling everything that has happened and you will see on an average the good things will definitely dominate over the bad things obviously you need to journal it correctly as well if you have had great food today then you need to list it down if you have had great time with your friends today you need to list it down all those things if you learn something new today definitely list it down those are certain good things happening in your life if you got a new offer list it down you will see that always the good things will definitely have more dominance over the bad things that's how life is it cannot be any way other for anyone else the next one is attach yourself too much with the outcome and here let me take again the example that I taken earlier if you fail in an examination obviously someone would be unhappy but how unhappy would you be that depends on how you treat that if you attach your entire identity your entire word to that one examination obviously you will feel miserable about it whereas someone who is just taking it as an exam will have a very different experience and I've seen students doing this designation on LinkedIn Instagram changes to CAD aspirant UPSC aspirant what exactly is a CAD aspirant UPSC aspirant come on you're a student you cannot attach your entire identity to one examination and it's not only about examination it's also about anything in life unless and until there are alternatives you cannot attach your identity to one particular outcome. Finally, if you keep focusing on the short term gains, your life will be very, very miserable. And let me tell you an example over here. During my undergraduation days, there was a research internship opportunity in one of the IITs. And a lot of my batchmates, including the ones who wanted to pursue MBA in future, started applying for it. While this internship was only suited and would have been helpful for only people who probably wanted to pursue MTech or PhD in future. But a lot of batchmates applied for this. The reason was the short term thinking. That is the matter of prestige that this internship will bring in front of the batchmates in front of the college professors and a lot of people applied for that obviously the ones who did not get selected were very unhappy the ones who got selected went for the internship but those who were preparing for say MBA the amount of time that they lost in preparing for this research internship going there doing the entire research while it would not have helped and added any value in their profile if they wanted to pursue an MBA in future but they still went for the short term gain and probably lost valuable time to prepare for their ultimate destination to crack the CAT exam and that's how short-term gains can be a drug for you in your ultimate destination and that is how short-term gains can be a drug in your journey towards your final destination and another point here is from whom do you derive happiness if you start seeking everyone's validation your life is going to be miserable in this case the batchmates the college professors if everyone start making your decision you will not be able to take the decisions that is suited according to your interests. that's why keep a small cohort of people who are responsible for your happiness who are responsible to seek the validation that you want and your life will be much better